Good morning, Edisto Fork. Let us stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is the Lord's day. This is your house. Father, come and dwell. This is your house, a holy house of prayer. Where the lost and the lonely bring their burdens and their cares. This is your house. Father, come. Father, come and dwell. This is, this is your house, Father come, Father come and dwell, this is, this is your house, holy house of prayer, the holy house of prayer, where the Lord, where the Lord and the Lord and the Lord and This is, this is your house, your house, this is your house, Lord, come and dwell. Let us join together by praying our opening prayer. O oh Lord, our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts on us than we are to seek them and are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be open to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us continue these services by singing our hymn of celebration, I Will Trust in the Lord. Stay on the 
standing and while you're still trusting let us join together reaffirm our faith by reciting the affirmation of faith I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. Life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. seated. I want you to 
shaken together and running over for the measure you give will be the measure you receive for God loves what? Let us stand as we prepare to render to God that which belongs to God. Y'all, y'all got to keep those slides up there. Y'all missed the last one. All of my burden, all of my burden, I take them, take them to Jesus. All of my burden, all of my burden, I'll take them, Lord, take them to Jesus. All of my burden, all of my burden, take them to Jesus, take them to Jesus. And I can leave, I can leave your trouble, my trouble, all of my troubles there. All of my troubles, all of my troubles, I'll take them, take them to Jesus. All of my troubles, all of my troubles, I'll take them all, take them to Jesus. All of my troubles, all of my troubles, I'll take them all, take them to Jesus. I can leave, I can leave my 
my trouble, my trouble, every one of my troubles, my trouble, all of my burdens, all of my burdens, I'll take them, take them to Jesus, all of my burdens, all of my burdens, take them all, Lord, take them to Jesus. All of my burdens, Lord, all of my burdens, take them all, take them to Jesus, and I can leave my trouble, every one of my troubles, all, all of my burdens, all of my burdens, just stay right there, all of my burdens, all of my burdens, see where I come from, all of my burdens. Rose will and branch will. All of my people call it six or six. All of my people. All the old folks will. All of my people. 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 All of my
know that he will, he will provide. I learned, I learned to lean on, on Jesus. Everlasting, everlasting. Put your hands together. Come on. Yeah. Well, I learned, I learned to lean. And depend, depend on Jesus. Put your hands on my I to leave my hand that can trust in the Lord. I found out Lord, if I trust him, he will, he will provide. I learned, I learned, I learned to lean to lean on Jesus. Everlasting, everlasting. Well, oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what a joy to find it on Jesus. Everlasting, oh what a blessing! Oh what a blessing! Oh what a peace of mind! I learned, I learned to lean on Jesus. Everlasting, everlasting, oh well, I learned, I learned to lean and depend, and depend on Jesus. Oh, wish I had some money that could trust in the Lord. Well, I found that if I trust Him. You know that he will, he will provide. I learned, I learned to lean on him. Oh, Jesus, everlasting, everlasting, oh, singing, oh, what a fellowship, oh, what a joy, man, leaning on Jesus, everlasting, oh, what a blessing, oh, what a blessing. I learned, I learned to lean on him. Oh, Jesus, everlasting, everlasting, oh, well, I learned, I learned to lean. And if he had been no Jesus, I had somebody, I learned to live, somebody in. here that could trust, trust in the Lord. Well, I found out, Lord, if I trust him, know that I found out, Lord, if I trust him, I found out, Lord, if I trust him, if I would only trust him, Lord, if I trust him.
I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to to Thee. I need the I need thee. Anybody need the Lord today? Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to to thee shine all on me shine me let the light from the lighthouse shine on me oh shine oh From the lighthouse shine on, on me. Would you bow your heads with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, in the strong name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and thanks. For this another day's journey and for this high privilege to worship you once again we don't take it for granted because we know it was you that woke us up this morning and allowed the blood to still be running warm in our veins for that we want to say thank you now God I need you now take me away from me now now is your time as I decrease you increase oh my father send your preacher in other words in other words Shine on me, shine on me, Lord let your light from your lighthouse shine on me, and may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord my strength. My Redeemer, 
And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. For those of you who have your Bibles, I want to invite your attention to Matthew's Gospel the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 24. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. I want to tag this text with the topic, seeing the big picture. Church, I want to begin this lesson by posing a question to you today. What do you see from the position in which you are sitting in life today? Hmm? What do you see? I raise this question because the Bible makes it clear that from the perspective of what we are able to see, it will determine our destiny and lot in life. You know Proverbs 29 and 18 declares, where there is no vision, yes, sir. the people perish. In this day and time, unfortunately, so many people are not led by vision, but they're driven out of their circumstances and situations. Another way to put it is that people in the church have become people of reaction and not folk of proaction. We are, in most cases, in a mode of responding to something taking place in our lives instead of planning and putting into place those things that will cause something to happen in our lives. Living day in and day out without a sense of purpose and direction for your life is a sentence that is best described as cruel and unusual punishment. So many of God's children have been induced with the drug of complacency and conformity. And I believe that this is the greatest effect of this pandemic. It has caused folk to settle. It has caused folk to become complacent. Where you have settled for whatever life sends your way. You see, many have compromised their treasure in their earthen vessel and daily talents are being taken away because they refuse to use what God has given them. Strip of power. Strip of passion. All you have are words that speak of what you're going to do, but you never get around to doing it. And so their words are falling on deaf ears because we've heard it all too many times, haven't we? In the words of my granddaddy, talk is cheap, money by land. 
I don't know about you, church, but I've come to be weary with the talk that folk are putting forth only to be nothing but vain and empty repetition. Always promising, never producing. Got a pipe dream, but not a plan of action. And all the while, time is quickly and quietly moving on. Unfortunately, the bottom line with so many of God's children reads the same. Out of time and nothing to show for it. The older we get, the more time sensitive we should become. Because one day you're going to come to realize that time can be your best friend as well as your worst enemy. The window of opportunity for so many is getting smaller and smaller. Minute by minute, time is ticking away. Again, I want to pose the question, how is the view from where you are in life today? How wide is your window? And can you see the big picture? For your life. The ability to vision and to see the big picture in your life, church, I believe, is the key to living and experience not just mere life, but abundant life. Yes. Too often, so many of God's children are confined to seeing only the day in and day out aspects of their lives. You're stuck in a rut. Every week is the same. Nothing changes because you have no expectation for a God vision to take place in your life. You have not the faith to believe that for you all things are possible. You're just going through the motion. And time is moving on. You see, the beginning and the ending of life is centered around what I call the snapshots of life. You see, a snapshot is an experience that can be good or bad, and these experiences are really stepping stones that can propel us to a higher place of destiny if we see them as such. However, what happens all too often for so many of God's children is that they live for the snapshot, but not for the big picture. They don't take advantage of the stepping stones of life. They sit in their circumstances because life for them consists of just getting by. They have picked up this bad habit of being grounded in your circumstance and not growing out of your circumstance. You see, what the enemy sends to destroy you, you got to know that God will use that thing to develop you. Because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And I don't care where you are or what you're up against. If good hadn't come your way yet, just remember God is still working it out for you and so don't you get weary and don't you get discouraged be not dismayed whatever betide God will do I have a witness how many of you know God will take care of you 
Because the mills of the gods grind slowly but exceedingly fine. Behind the dim unknown is God is in the shadow keeping watch above his own. God is working it out. How many of you know the Lord will make a waste? Lord will make a way somehow. Don't allow your stepping stone to become a crutch when life is so much more, when life has so much promise to it, when life has so much to give you you can't receive what life has for you because your view is limited. This is the season to grow and not be grounded, not be confined, not be trapped. So many of God's people are confined to just having a good time in life. While others are confined by trying to avoid bad times in life. And between these two are others who are so twisted for them that good is bad and bad is good. They will find a way to take a positive and make it a negative. And they will take negatives and make them positive but each of them in a negative way. And so hear what Jesus says. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if the eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of dark. And if then the light in you is darkness, how great is your darkness? There is no light in the life of so many of God's children because their eye is unhealthy. No focus. No vision. And all they're doing is feeling their way through life because they're in the dark. Stuck in a rut. And too often, if you're not careful, you will find yourself repeating those generational curses that have taken place in your family. You will find yourself doing what you said you, wouldn't go, you wasn't going to do. Well, when you're in the dark, those who live in dark rooms develop negatives but can't see the big picture. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Because there is no light. Turn the light on. My father used to go in the, in the room and did, didn't cut the light on and we hear a bunch of stumbling and bumbling mama holler, boy, turn the light on. <laughs> light is revelation. Light is wisdom. Did you hear me? Wisdom. And I think next year is going to be our theme is going to be the year of wisdom. Because too often we're trying to make life decisions and choices with limited and faulty information. You can't go on the words of people. Not even the not even the best of folk can, can inform you better than what God can give you. 
I believe it's safe to say that the majority of our decisions are made out of limited understanding without seeking the wisdom of God. And we know what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us. Trust in the Lord. Did you hear me? That's where you got to begin. Don't listen to your girlfriend or your best buddy or your ace coon boom, but trust in the Lord. I don't care where you are, what you're going through, the beginning for your success has got to be rooted in those words. Trust in the Lord. Don't rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make you straight your path or direct your path. Yes, yes. You see, one of the reasons things seem to be taking so long to happen in our lives is because our path is not straight, but crooked, zigzag, up and down. Now we learned early in life that the shortest distance between two points, straight line. You got to stay on the street called straight. And God is the one who can put a straight line in your life. He can straighten out the crookedness. How many of you know God can straighten out the valleys in your life when you trust him? He can and he will straighten out your health. He'll straighten out your finances. He'll fix your marriage. He will help your mindset. He'll give you direction. How many of you know that the Lord will order your steps? We quick to haul off and take off on our own. And then when we find we zigzagging. And then all of a sudden Ben say sung it, Lord, I want you to help me. Well, if you trust the Lord in the beginning. You would not have wasted the time that you waste. Trust in the Lord. If y'all don't hear nothing else I say. Hear this. Trust in the Lord. And then Jesus offered a powerful prophetic word. And I'm finished. He says no one. And serve two masters. For either you're going to hate the one and love the other. Or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Or God and man. This is what throws us in this verse. You cannot serve God and wealth. And we miss the meat of the principle Jesus is teaching us concerning our inability to serve two masters. Listen. This speaks, which speaks to what Jesus said in the previous verse. He said, you can't desire light and continue to live in darkness. You can't get the promise of one while holding on to the other. I believe the song said it better than I, trying to love two. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all wouldn't save all your life. Uh, I see you in the nightclub. All hug up. Trying to love two. Ain't easy to do. All right. yes, sir. You can't hold on to one. Yes, sir. You can't 
Hold on to the other. You see, you got to let something go. You can't desire debt freedom and still hold on to a spending spirit. You can't have the fruit of productivity and still hold on to the spirit of laziness. You can't have joy and still chase your pains. You can't have victory and still hold on to defeat. You can't have it both ways. And the challenge is you got to let something go. Why are you holding on to it? Because if you're willing to let go, you will gain something better. And this is where the serving of God and wealth or man is important because what Jesus is saying is you can't walk by faith and also walk by sight. Your ability to walk will be compromised when you try to hold on to the two. So at a Stofalk, my assignment is to challenge us as God is challenging me. What we must do is get our vision in perspective. And not only write the vision, but pursue it with all diligence. A vision for our lives that can see beyond right now and look into our tomorrow. Not with a pipe dream, but with a real vision. What are you willing to commit to today? Will you be able to reap a harvest for your future? The challenge is you got to get the most out of each day get out of that bed you gotta be productive you gotta reach for higher heights and you gotta believe that with God uh, all things are possible for you if you can see it and if you can believe it you can achieve it. There's a large picture, big picture for your life. Can you see it? And if you can't see it, mark today as the day that I am determined to see what God has for me. Lord have mercy. And how many of you know God's got some good for you? How many of you know God has something big for you? How many of you know that if you trust God uh, and if you hang on in there, God's going to bless you mighty good? Trust in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Can you see it? Amen. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour lead me through the darkness thy face to see lead me O oh Lord lead I am lost if thy take thy hand from me 
I am blind without thy light to see. Lead me through the darkness, thy face to see. Oh, lead me, oh Lord, lead me. I need you to lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. I need you to lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. I need you to lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Yes, I need you to lead me, lead me, oh Lord, lead me. There's another song that I believe is appropriate that we need to hold fast to. That says, Lord, whatever you're doing, in this season don't do it without me don't do it without me if it's healing you're doing in this season don't do it without me don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, please don't do it without me. Lord, have mercy. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing, come on, church. Lord, don't do it. do it without me. Lord, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if it's healing.
you bow your heads with me? Mm. As we approach the throne of grace and mercy, we're mindful of those who own our heel list. And we're mindful of those who mourn. Remember brother Donnie Frazier and his family, Donnie lost his sister this week. Remember the family of Herbert Franklin who passed this week. And remember the Sally Harrison Gardner family at the passing of Miss Elise Padgett. For all those who mourn, we are mindful of the fact that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And so we don't grieve as those who without hope. For we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Again, we lift up those on our heel list. We stand and affirm the promise that by the stripes of Christ, we are healed. We pray for world affairs. Affirming the fact that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we affirm the hope in knowing that if God be for you, He's more than anything against you. Let us pray. Father God, in the strong name of Jesus, we, we thank you. And we praise your name. Help us to see beyond our circumstances. And envision the promise that you have for our lives. Get us out of the rut. From the position of having a pity party. But let us have expectation. Knowing that better is available. Yeah. And better is coming or in other words greater is coming when we put our trust in you and all of our trust all of our hope is in you Christ Jesus Lord we lift up those who mourn and those who are battling health ailments and those who are just going through life. We lift them up. And we know that as long as we trust in you, you said you would direct our paths. And so we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you right now, Lord. Because behind the cloud, the sun is going to shine. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer. 
And we raise this petition in no other name than the sweetest name we know. Send the strong name of Jesus, we pray. God's people said amen. 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 Now, perhaps there's somebody here today. You're not saved. You're ready to give your life to Christ. You can do that now. All you got to do is stand where you are. And we'll pray the prayer of salvation with you. Or perhaps you're already saved and you're not in the church and it's the will of God for you to be in the church. We would love to have you here at Edisto Fork. I want to be your pastor. If you desire to be a part of our church family stand, we'll take you in. in the name of Jesus. If you love the Lord, if you truly love the Lord, how about give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. We pray that the word of God has touched you in such a way that you will leave here better than you came. And you will begin looking to see the big picture. Don't let the small things trip you up. As the saying said, don't sweat the small stuff. There's something bigger, something greater, something better. Yeah, don't let the enemy get you tied up in the weeds there's a harvest in view amen and so next week we're going to talk about the big picture we're going to talk about focus how to get focus amen amen all right let us stand. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you his peace so that you can see the big picture. Now, henceforth and forevermore, and the people of God said, Amen. Now don't leave until I get down the aisle.